Hey, it's well, wild. Hey, we're going to find out as we jump here Five into game seven, number eight, four in this best of one for Group A in the wild card stage. Let's go ahead and find out exactly where this falls in place. This is a very dire Welcome match for both teams securing legends. themselves up. And you can see it right there. So it is going to be Chan on that Lunox. You have this typical Moskov going to the gold lane like we thought it would. And of course, the Dyroth jungle. So looking at this too, I always like to look. We do have a temporal rain on Soxa with this Alice jungle, right? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like some people also like this temporal rain emblem and some a lot of people just don't like to use it just yet this early aggression already i like the new cho though i like this you know you get that extra 180 percent uh on the basic attack let's see that bar is full and you'll see them already be on this side yeah, a little bit of damage on erwin there he is gonna get stunned up tracy able to get the kill Ooh. erwin does go down there tracy able to just dodge out hide on bush looking for something on the side of e7 here they have some burst potential, right? They yeah. have the Lunox, they have the, the Dyroth, and then they have the setup with that as well. But they're going to need to be able to work for get together. I think I want to see Entity 7 kind of rotate a lot in this early game, maybe bring four, four, maybe even all five towards that turtle pit to look for those big fights and capitalize on this type of composition. Just a full rotation is what Trex wants. Yeah. And you know, really, with KBG's lineup, oh, man, I don't push. Ooh, Marquino looking for something. Tracy is able to dodge out of the way. See you holding down the front side in the tri-bush. In comes Soxa. What a fight. Looking for something as well, but Entity 7 able to disengage there. Turtle going to be up in about 12 seconds. All right, 10 seconds away from that first objective. For KBG, honestly, they can't really pull the go signal just yet until Tracy, you know, has this uh, advantage, has that level four. But the fact that they already did get that kill you know, it gives them this uh, little room, I would say, to breathe on this Cho pick to, to kind of play around with. But once he gets that level four, then Entity 7 really has to watch out for the setup potential. They have their own as well, though, especially with an Edith. So half health on the Turtle. Yeah, Turtle's going to go to the side of Entity 7. Chan able to secure it. Marquino able to get the knock up. Down in the, down in the purple buff, though. Sasa does get knocked up. Erwin trying to get away, but the damage coming in. Hide and Bush will go down. Next up on the list, Marquino taking some shots from CU. He's going to have to get out of town, though. Three members trying to collapse onto him. Picks up a heal from LMU, and both teams disengage, but keep best gaming, walking away 2-0. Entity 7 gets the turtle. I'll tell you what the biggest difference I see in KBG this time around for the wild card. They're much more disciplined. And the, the rotations that they have, Tracy? Tracy able to get the way of the dragon onto Chan here. Chan some brilliance. able to use the brilliance. Going to be safe, should be safe, will be safe. Okay, going back to the point, KBG is much more disciplined this time around, I feel like, than what we saw in the M5 wildcard. You can definitely see kind of the impact that the, the I mean, even Brilliant Soxa has had for them and some of the shot calling as well. Tracy doing an amazing job on this choke pick, very aggressive. Just hope that, you know, he's able to kind of manage that and not get it too a little too aggressive that it punishes him. But as we look at these items kind of fall into place, no first items locked in just yet. But well on the way here. Soxa now on this side of the jungle. Might want to put some pressure here. Way the dragon. Nice way of the dragon. On to Erwin, though. Fury going to come in. Soxa. Oh, Tracy. Able to dash away there. In comes Fury. Gets a couple shots off on a Tracy. Ooh. E7 trying to collapse onto one. Oh. They find one. Soxa able to go down. Chan picks up the kill. That's one, two. But the gold still at a standstill, Naisu. It's 10k, 10k. And E7 looking for more, though, in the purple buff. LMU trying to defend. Along with Tracy, Ooh. the knockup comes in. The Noten's Fury. Tracy goes down. See you. See you trying to help out, but unable to connect onto anybody there. LMU now just defending the mid side. See you needs to try to get out of here. Marquino locks in, knocks him up, and takes him out. And he's seven going to walk away with a the lead there. Oh, I don't know how much different that would have unfolded if CU was actually able to get the penalty zone in the right area. But he kind of did it a little bit too early, so wasn't able to join the fight, and then just gets closed off from it entirely. So with that, Entity 7 really on this upswing will be able to get those kills. Now the objective, they got two turtles under their hands, and they're furthering this gold lead at this point. It was kind of a stalemate for a while, but now with everything falling into place, you can see it happening. Even looking at the gold difference here, gold lanes, you know, gold lanes are doing okay, of course. You know, Fury's farming up. Spirit Destruction has been landing. Wow, Ooh. he actually follows up with it, but he's just going to go back to lane after that. I'm not sure if they were going to get the call. Erwin was there. 
They could have possibly set things up, but he doesn't have the Minoian Fury just yet. So now as we take a look at the items, first items are falling into place. You got the Clock of Destiny already on at Soxa. We know that changed now. It just, those stacks are there. Then you have the Enchanted Talisman here, of course, for Chan. So, you know, kind of, I, I think one of the big power spikes for this, while we take a little breather here between the teams, when we talk about power spikes, Trex, who's got the better mid-game power spike from these two lineups? I uh, you, think like, who with do you think? mid-game, I think Entity 7, I think they kind of have an early, and as long as they have the lead, they will have a nice mid-game power spike. Um, they have the Dyroth. It's gonna he's gonna pack more and more of a punch as this goes forward. Um, and then the Lunox as well. Whether you like it or not, she's Lunox is late game, but also has a decent aggression in early and mid. She can still shred down. Um, also has the escape ability with the brilliance, can kind of work around some of these big these big skirmishes during these uh, neutral objectives. I think when we take a look at KBG, they're kind of waiting, right? Yeah. They kind of want to get to that late game, but the problem is Zeny7 also has some late game possibilities with the Moskov, with the Lunox and everything. So it's kind of a toss up. I do kind of feel like if it gets to very late game, KBG may have the advantage. Uh, what are your thoughts? Oh, you know what? I just It's been so long since I've seen also an Alice uh, utilized in the jungle mm. that I'm just kind of wondering on how good this will play out later on. As we jump back into the game here, Scaling wise, obviously for the lineup for KBG can be good, but it really relies on just letting Claude get to where you need to be. You know, you need those three, four items to really be able to shine on that blazing duet for wah wah wah. And that's something that can happen here. We're on the other side. You already know. Hold on, bottom. A little bit of damage on a wah wah wah. But the heart guard comes in. Fury now Ooh. taking the damage himself. May go down here. LMU. Able to take that kill would have been better in Wawa Wawa's hands, but it's okay. KBG just needs some pressure on the board. Yeah, they, they at least get that kill down, you know, and they're going to actually put some pressure on the Tier 1 possibly here unless it can be defended by Irwin. But that's what I was saying. You know, Claude really has to be able to farm up, get those multiple items that he needs, and then you can really shine. But even with that, like we already just saw, with a hard guard enough, if he's able to outplay or outmaneuver with the BMI, did you make it? Oh, hold on. Ooh, Tracy. The damage from wow. Chan right now is just bonkers. And this is what I mean. Like, the Lunox you expect it to be late game, but the mid game damage right now coming from Entity 7 is definitely vicious. It's, uh, I mean, he's not even hiding on Bush. Like, he's just there. You know, and this Dyroth, the damage threat is really good paired up with this Mozkov, and that's kind of what we're seeing here. And we haven't even talked that much about Marquino. You know, Marquino's damage with the Primal Wrath, the setup potential is all great, and that's why Edith has really risen in stock in a lot of these teams' lineups. He's gonna go ahead and whittle down here. They have three turtles now already in the hands of Entity 7, so they're well on their way to having a really good first Lord take once that's up in a couple minutes. Here's one of the big problems, though, from Entity 7 is they haven't really... Oh, wait a second, a little bit of damage. Oh, but cool. the kick comes back. LMU does go down. Tracy tries to save the day, but unable to do it. I was just going to say Entity 7 needs to start taking towers, and they read my they lips. They take the mid lane, which is a huge tower, because now the rotations are in. Marquino able to get the knock up onto CU. Cool. They're gonna they just fight. want that purple buff that any seven might not give it to him. That's what brings out the blood oath. Big, big hit in the backside. Lots of damage on Entity 7. In comes the Blazing Duet. Hide on Bush. Getting melted down. LMU able to put another kill into the pocket as E7 back off Marquino. Now in between four members. Taking shots. Shouldn't be able to escape this. Wah, wah, wah. Picks up the kill. It's a two for zero trade. Keep best gaming. Trying to get back that gold. You see what I'm saying? Like, KBG's discipline. Is so much is so much better now. I feel like as we see, look at this replay. They actually had a good initiation this time around. I feel like CU wanted to make up for the last penalty zone. <laughs> Makes it up here. Great hard guard in the blazing duet, and just the follow up that they have here is really good. And then the call off to just go and get that kill from Marquino. So you know some of this shot calling that you're seeing happening in real time for KBG is a very different KBG than before. So. I, honestly, with this game, the best of one, and knowing what's at stake here for both these teams, Trex, it could go either way once we get to the Lord. Yes, Entity 7 got all three turtles, but KBG's got some good fight in them, too. I mean, look at the items. He's only got a DHS and a Corrosive Scythe. He's working on that third item. Probably going to pick up the Golden Staff. Might choose to take some defense, though, too. Could pick up an early Wind of Nature. But right now, KBG showing that they can actually contest and fight against Entity 7 despite them really controlling some of these objectives. 
So now the Lord's up. They're going to go ahead and just full on start it. They'll keep LMU up top. Look rushing. at this pushing. Soxa trying to find a way in as Fury just melted down. Penalty zone in the backside only finds Chan, but Soxa comes back and gets the stun onto three members. More damage coming Ooh. out of the nice way of the dragon. Marquino goes down and Sasa able to take another one. Fury finds Tracy, but the wow. Lord still don't know. Sasa takes it. It's four members down on the side of Entity 7. Nothing but Irwin left. KBG take the lead and start to bring the game into their hands. What a fight from KBG. And they're going to get so much off this first Lord here. They might even knock on the shields of these base turrets of Entity 7. And as I was calling it, you know, it really depended where were they going to be able to fight on that first Lord. It looked like Entity 7 wanted to rush it, and they did. They brought it to a fourth of the health, and then they lost the fight. Now, CU has had two great setups with the penalty zone. You're going to find Entity 7 on this defense. Again, this is a best of one for them. Very crucial to get to that top spot right now on that journey. And it looks like they're going to have to do their best to defend this base. Half health on the Lord. They should be able to clear it. Brilliant. Already being popped to Tracy. Yeah, Look at him just standing here menacingly, on. but they'll go ahead and work on that. So they're fine, but Energy 7, it's looking, you know, the lead they had, it's now lost. They, they're down about 3,000 gold. You can see some of these spikes happening. The item spikes are happening. Those items of the, you know, the second, third, fourth items are being locked in here. Some defensive items as well. And I got to say, man, CU has really stepped up after just that one minor mistake he had, you know, with the penalty zone. A lot of these penalty zones are the things that are setting this up for KBG to fight on. Yeah, we're starting to see the Dyroth fall off a little bit, right? Hide on Bush, 0-3-3. Three, and three. Yes, he packs a punch, but the, the defense just isn't quite there. He just locked it. He has the Radiance. Looks like maybe he's going for uh, anti Harass, possibly? Yeah. He's got the Juggernaut in right now. Depends on which route he wants to take and what he wants to work on next. But still, it's just not enough, and, they, and nobody's really holding the front line for Entity 7. And even if they do, Sasa just hits that. That, that flicker into the backside yeah. and is able to get, a, like we saw, three-man stun right next to the turtle, able to put out the damage. I feel like Keep Best Gaming, their positioning so far in these in these small skirmishes, in these fights, has been key to their victory. And, like, looking at this, even the damage dealt, Chan has been doing a ton of damage. It's great that he does that, but still, you know, it kind of falls off from there, so this is where Fury has to step up and land a lot of these fights for himself, and... Get the positioning down on Pat. I mean, even Irwin, man. Irwin is a good key component to be able to win some of this fight. If they have to disengage using the Minoan Fury, if they can set up for it better, especially with the Flicker. But right now, it just feels like Entity 7 doesn't have much of a choice. They're playing at the tune of KBG. And sometimes that's even just Tracy, the, the threat, I could say. Like, this is something that, you know, there was a time we didn't see Cho pop up too much. And now you, you kind of, even though he had this little bit of a... a I don't want to say rework, but he has this now, this added benefit of some extra damage on his basic attack, 180%. With the Concussive Blast, you'd be surprised at how much damage that actually does if he finds a target, picks him off, and then follows through with it. And so right now, I think Entity 7, part of the struggle for them is utilizing Chan to get that damage off that we've seen him do, but then have a good follow-up from Fury based off, you know, hide on Bush. Dyroth, like you said, might be falling off a little bit at this point in the game, but it's more so he's got to be very careful in the way he approaches these fights because, you know, Soxa on the Alice, she's she's finicky. It's She's kind of hard to catch, and you don't really know where she's going, you know, and that's she's part of the tough part about it. She's unexpected. She's unexpected. unexpected. <laughs> she is. You gotta unexpect the. You gotta expect the unexpected. It's a tongue twister at this it, point, man. It is. It's, it's getting hard. But I will say this. And the big thing about Soxa too on this pick is it is only gonna continue to get stronger. And stronger Have you seen his farm? And stronger and stronger. And it, like I said, Entity Seven. I think this was a time in the game when they were really supposed to kind of continue that power spike. And yeah. now that they've fallen behind. It, it's, it feels tough for them. They do have a set potential with Irwin, but he's getting melted down. The stun comes in. Does get the no one's free. No, it gets stopped, and he's unable to pop the oh. penalty zone into the backside. And Tracy. CU with the blazing duet finds John, and three members of Entity 7 are taken out. Saxa up against Fury. It's a 2v1 because Tracy jumps in. Nothing but Marquino left. All for the price of wah, wah, wah. Keep best game and looking to possibly end this. They're going to try to take this tower. They got a wave coming down the mid side. Tracy, CU, LMU moving on to Marquino. Okay, Marquino, it's just him by himself. He's just going to try to clear the wave, hold on to the base turret. Oh, LMU. Okay, he's going to be fine. Oh, Tracy goes in even defensively. Look at Marquino's damage. The trading between them, KBG is definitely a different team than what we saw before. Even that little exchange there, seeing them kind of 
back and forth. And wait, does he not go for Wait, the Trix, they don't uh, off that whole exchange? Thing. They don't get the Lord. I don't think so. Could he do it himself? Was the, the Lord was hitting too hard? Well, the Lord does, it does hurt. Hit hard it now. does hit hard. I mean, look, okay, look at the replay. This is, again, a great initiation for KBG. CU gets a penalty zone on two. Tracy gets the nice, good away of the dragon, and they follow up. From this, I'm ex I'm kind of surprised. They get Fury. It's only Marquino. They could have actually just made a beeline for the Lord, got the Lord, but instead they tried to get that mid turret. They didn't even get the mid turret. So now they're back to square one here for the Lord dance. And yes, to answer your question, the Lord hurts quite a bit. I mean, even if it's the first Lord of the game, second Lord, they do do quite a bit of damage to these junglers now with yeah, look, that I mean, change. Two shots on Asasa and he's down to like 70%. Yeah. It, yeah. I don't think he could 1v1 Lord right oh, now. He might not be able to do it. Oh, wait a second. Wave the dragon on a Marquino up in the top side. Wawa able to pick up the kill. And I think as long as Keep Best Gaming keeps on getting these pickoffs, yeah. NE7, they're, they're not going to be able to compete for this. They, they can't even really find a way in exactly. I think Erwin, the only big possibility for NE7 is a big No One's Flicker, right? A big Fury Flicker able to maybe just catch them off guard. I think that's just in the base at this point, Trex. That's going to be the Lord already secured here for K KBG. Tracy has been on point with his Cho, really able to pull the trigger and find the right targets, giving the advantage to KBG at this point in the game. 15 minutes in, items nearly locked in, you know, especially for Wawa Wa. He has pretty much everything he needs, plus the heart guard. It's really difficult to get to him now that he also has that defensive wind of nature. So, Entity 7, gonna have to defend against this push from the Lord. It's gonna charge in and take out this mid turret. Can they defend this? Now yeah, watch for Soxa. Look for the dash in. Lord able to take down the tower. Tracy able to get the way of the dragon onto Marquino. Couple shots from Wawa. Nice from Owen's Fury. Is it going to be enough though? See so you taking a lot of damage. Marquino goes down and they are unloading right now. Sasa on the front side. Sasa looking for more. Hide on Bush taking some damage. Maybe goes down. Sasa looking for the re-engage, gets the stun. Up. Hide on Bush, still able to get away with the Lord, finally connecting onto the base now. See you, looking for a couple free shots, tracing the backside, oh. able to get the knockup onto Fury. Sasa finally what? goes down, and Entity 7 is defending. They're not just defending, they're responding. They finally take down the Lord. Hide on Bush looking for another target. Sasa down, Marquino down, it's a one for one, and Entity 7 able to defend. What happened? KBG not able to end the game there, even with that Lord already knocking on the base. And it was probably a mix of, you know, they wanted to finish those kills up to make it a little more clean and then finish, but some were hitting on the base and then it just kind of fell apart for them. You got to give it up. It was a great initiation, a great response too. You know, it took a little while for that entry. Once the hard guard was used for Wawa Wa to go in, you're going to see that unfold here. You think they could push this one in, but it was a great defense from Entity 7, really clearing the best they could, pumped out a lot of damage, and then KBG kind of just, they didn't know what to do with that situation. So then they find themselves at least with two turrets down in Entity 7's base, but they're gonna find themselves in a similar situation where it's like, all right, Tracy, we're counting on you. Go get a pick off, and this is where, as you know, at this point in the game, 17 minutes in, it's been working great, Tracy's been on point, but it also could be an instance where it's one bad initiation from a Cho. That's always the the gamble, if you will, in, in sense of how do we use this way of the dragon to find our pickoff, but what if it doesn't work? Because it, you also got Purifies. There it is. There's one lot of damage on Erwin. Pure destruction. destruction comes out. He decides not to pull the trigger on that one. Enemy 7 able to defend, able to get back, and Erwin will be able to recover that health. Still in the game. Okay, they get a lot of ultimates out, you know, at least, but... What it all comes down to, once again, Trex, is just resetting. You know, there's still, what, 14 seconds away from this Lord here. And the further that they, they wait, that Entity 7 awaits for this, the better chance I do feel like that they have contesting a Lord. But the biggest thing they have to kind of counterplay into is what I just said with Tracy, if he gets the way of the Dragon off. And that's why you have those purifies. You have some of these defensive items now. You have the crown picked up as well here to play around with to try to stall something out because this is a crucial one. This could be a game-changing Lord here as both teams kind of get us situated. They got the information. Erwin's there. But notice, you know, nowadays in this current meta, you don't just go and pull out the Lord and let, let it hit you. You know, you kind of got to approach this in a different manner. And so that's what you see Entity 7 even doing. They can just let KBG be the ones to start it up and kind of approach this Lord. But it looks like right now, neither team really wants to do that. And I think Entity 7, if they can find their own somehow pick off, it worked great. Look at Hide on Bush. He's literally yeah, he's hiding, hiding on the bush. bush. He's doing what he's doing. 
That's, I mean, and he's got the position. He's going to try to look for the angle here, and I think that's why Entity 7, you mentioned it, let the other team start it up. I think Entity 7 is looking for that, but something to point out is Wah 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 has been doing a great job of controlling that long lane. lane. You look at that top lane right now, and it's just pushing in slowly onto Entity 7 earlier. Him yep. and LMU cleared the wave. They had to send uh, Marquino up there to kind of defend it a bit, but still, it's just going to continue pushing. Entity 7 has to do something about that. At some point, they have to pull the trigger. Cool. See you. Able to get away from there. The heart guard does almost come out there. They're able to hold it in. He's looking for it. Who's he going to put it on? Sasa or Wah Wah Wah? And still goes. Still not doing it. Yeah, going to be, uh, I mean, very calculated here. There's the heart guard. Ooh, big kick on Irwin. A lot of damage on Irwin. Sasa able to pop the immortality onto him. Spear Destruction does come out. Chan looking for the getaway, but Sasa able to find him. Next might be hide on Bush after Fury. he finds Wah Wah Wah. The hide on Bush popping off right now. Looking for the damage. The Truncheon comes out. A lot of damage on Asata. Might go down. Oh. Fury able to get no hide on Bush gets a kill. It's two for one right now. Entity seven popping off, but minions are on the base. Do they go for this lord or do they go back to defending clear? Oh, they have to defend. Look, they can't even actually commit to this lord because CU and LMU are there. They might start it up, but this is still gonna be a push and pull between both. The final turret of the base of Entity Seven will go down. And that might have been a long enough time for KBG to get back for this Lord fight. So Fury, the last fight, he just popped off in the back line. He was free hitting, so they have to solve that issue. He still has the Purify available. There they go, the once again. From Fury. Fury's coming online right now, and this he is gonna be a problem. Even though they took the nerf, Moskov in the late game is still an issue, as we can see. We saw with that last fight, he's up in the top side. He's able to use the Spirit, he's able to clear the lane, Use Spear Destruction to get in the midst of things. Yeah. Output enough damage. You have Hide on Bush who can kind of reap, clear things up. I mean, Entity 7 holding this game together well. They've taken back the lead. Oh, man. Interesting. That last item locked in from Hide on Bush is going to be the Malefic Roar as well. Yeah. So a little more penetration to deal with. And that's what's blowing up KBG's defenses. If he's able to get the, the setup that he's looking for and then Fury just pops off from the backside, sh you know, shooting off these spears and everything else. It's tough for KBG to deal with on the front side. So now the tables have turned here. Entity 7 will be marching in with this Lord in the mid lane. They're gonna want more, Cham. Cham, looking for the engage here. Lord down about half health. CU also looking for something, but taking a little bit too much. Sasa into the backside though. Way the Dragon does connect onto Hide on Bush. Hide on Bush takes a teeth of damage, but cool. Tracy takes more, taken out from Marquino. Saksa though, still holding down the backside. Look for LMU, looking for something. Wah 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 goes down. Saksa wow. goes down. Entity 7, all five up against Keep Best Gaming. Keep Best Gaming tried their best, but Entity 7 should be able to clear this out. They still need some minions, though. Yeah, minions yet. Waiting for a wave to come. It's 40 seconds. That is going to be it yeah. for KBG. Just some time will tell. Brilliance with the base. Wave, last wave will be pushing in here. They're going to take that turret to clean it up. And here they go. They'll go ahead and take this game in the best of one against KBG.